Point lights are needed for a variety of purposes. Renderworks has a built-in point light as part of its lighting tool. Simply click on the light tool, choose point light from the mode bar and insert it into your scene. You can find all the settings for the point light in the object info palette and adjusting your light's properties is just as easy as for any other object in Vectorworks. We will leave soft shadows off for this demo but it is usually a good idea to turn this on. Next, we'll turn on emitter brightness and we'll set it to 5000 lumen. Using an emitter will help you compare values later on in a project, plus emitter brightness can be overridden by custom render works if necessary. The dimmer will still work for quick adjustments, but we'll leave that at 100% too. An important control to create moody light is the color control, which can use either a Kelvin value or, more intuitively, allows you to use a color from your operating system's color picker. An important setting to know is the light intensity falloff, which can be preset to three different values. If set to none in our example, the distance of the wall will have no effect on the light intensity. We need to turn on Renderworks to see the effect, as OpenGL doesn't show it. Now watch what happens if I push out the wall to increase the distance between it and the light source. As you can see, the light is just as bright near the back wall as it is near the trophy. Now, if we turn on smooth falloff, the light intensity will be a lot lower near the back wall because the further away we get from the light source, the stronger the falloff. Consequently, if we bring the wall back in, the light and shadow on the back wall will become stronger. If we bring it in even more, the light effect will increase again. But there's a third option which is perhaps the most important one and that's realistic falloff. Realistic falloff is a preset which simulates the natural falloff of a light source. It's close to an exponential loss of intensity and is used most often whenever a point light is used as a direct light source. Once I turn it on, the shadows will disappear completely, so we'll adjust the brightness of the light source. This is important to remember when you use point lights with realistic falloff. Now the falloff is much more pronounced than with smooth falloff and eventually the light and therefore the shadow will disappear altogether. So with realistic falloff, the light may be very bright near an object, but hardly visible at all, the further you get away from it. Here's a little animation comparing the falloff types. I hope you can see clearly the different effect each type of falloff has on the light and the shadows it casts. OK, now that we know how to set up our point lights, let's look at some examples for how to use them in an actual scene. The most common use for a point light is probably within a lampshade. Actually, if you use point lights for direct illumination, it is a good idea to always enclose them inside a lampshade, as otherwise they will just be like bare bulbs, which doesn't make for very nice lighting in the scene. So, here's a point light set to 4700 lumens, realistic falloff, and a warm, slightly yellowish hue. In this example, I've also modelled the bulb and filament to make the result look even more realistic. These have no effect on the lighting in this scene, by the way. So, here is the light's effect as it filters through the lampshade, which has a backlight shader to allow the light rays through. Notice the warm red glow on the wall behind the lamp. Point lights are also great for exterior scenes. Here is the scene from the first movie as a night render. Notice how the backlight shader allows the light from the lamp post to cast a soft glow on the wall. We're also using a Renderworks camera effect to achieve the halo around the lamp post. But more about that in a later video. Point lights are also a great help when creating caustic effects of water or metal surfaces. You can use the photons emitted from these lights to create caustic reflections without actually using the light as direct lights. This is another fun scene which I modelled to try out several effects. To get the caustic effect, the lights are set to 90,000 lumens with no falloff, but with the show caustics only option checked. Sometimes scenes need a little filler light and point lights are just the ticket when it comes to brightening up some dark scenes, especially when you want the light to bring out single objects or only part of the scene. In this case the light is set to 5000 lumens with realistic falloff. Toggling it on and off by switching between the viewports shows how it brings out the highlights and the chair. You can adjust the effect of the point light by placing it closer or further away from the object and by adjusting its brightness. You can turn it off for each viewport individually in the visualization palette so it doesn't interfere with other scenes. So that's it for today. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.